بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم everybody and uh, good evening uh, uh, welcome to the uh, uh, first uh, webinar of message research uh, this uh, session or we are um, um, going to uh, start uh, um, the presentation of the article of the uh, my dear colleague uh, Dr. Farooq from Aligar, and uh, uh, after the presentation of uh, his article, we will discuss about the um, points of the articles, the method, the results, and the, uh, the suggestion about the future uh, um, studies. Uh, I especially uh, the, the welcome to my dear teacher and uh, um, uh, Professor Rashid Biha and uh, other my dear colleagues from uh, all of countries. Uh, I, I hope we will uh, use uh, his uh, good uh, suggestions about our works in the Mezaz research, inshallah, in the future. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, we are um, um, starting the presentation of uh, Dr. Fado. Dear Dr. Faru, please start. In the name of Allah, am I audible? Okay, your your video and your presentation is okay. Okay, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mujahidi uh, for giving me this opportunity to present uh, a paper of mine here. Uh, Initially, the first paper was uh, presented uh, last month, uh, and then uh, there was a wish of the Dr. Mujahidi that someone from India should also present a publication, his publication, some publication, and then uh, he uh, told me to do that, and I thought it uh, more uh, suitable to present my own paper uh, for this uh, for this webinar. And uh, I'm going to start that. Uh, just bear with me for a minute. Is the slides visible? Yes. Okay, uh, the title of this uh, article uh, uh, is uh, Physiological Variation of Serum Alkaline Phosphatase, which is an enzyme, level in Dhamui and Pelgami males in a sample population. <coughs> Sorry. So about this article, this article is about, uh, it was my MD thesis work. Uh, I did my MD in uh, Yunani Medicine, Kulyat. Uh, from uh, Ajmal Khantipa College, Aligarh Muslim University, and completed in 2004. So this was basically my MD thesis work, uh, 2004 work. And it was uh, finally published uh, because of some gap in my academic, uh, you know, I was out of academics for some years, but later then I joined the academics and then finally this paper was published in the Indian Journal of Traditional Knowledge, uh, it's volume 10, 10 and issue 4 in October 2011. The impact factor of this uh, journal uh, at present in 2020 is 0.757, but when I published this paper, the impact factor was uh, nearly about 0.4. This Indian Journal of Traditional Knowledge is a journal which is published by NISCARE, that is National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Research, which is uh, you know, a, a sub-body of CSIR, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research India. I had two co-authors in this paper, Professor Iqtadarul Hassan Zaidi and Professor F.S. Shirani. Uh, and Professor F.S. Shirani was the guide of my thesis. Now coming to the background, uh, what made me to take this study, take this topic for my MD thesis. As we all know that Mizaj is a core concept of Yunani medicine or Persian medicine. And uh, in uh, Yunani medicine, the prevention of the disease, the diagnosis of the disease, or the treatment of the disease is based on mizaj. Uh, whether uh, we have to diagnose a disease, we diagnose based on the mizaj. The treatment is also uh, varies according to the mizaj of the disease and mizaj of the person. So here, uh, when everything depends uh, on uh, the mizaj of Yunani medicine or Persian medicine, 
becomes essential that this theory is somehow validated. These claims we made about the Mizaj are somehow validated. So coming to the class. Uh, 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 sorry, Dr. Farouk, please uh, yes. present um, uh, in the uh, full screen your presentation. Okay, your, okay, okay, uh, okay, 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 no. okay. Thank Thanks okay. a lot. So, so, so coming to the classification of mizaj, mainly uh, in, in Yunani medicine in India, we classify mizaj in four major groups. Uh, that is the uh, Dhamvi, Balgami, Safravi, or Sodavi, or you may call them as hot and cold, hot and uh, sorry, hot and uh, wet, hot and dry, cold and uh, dry and cold and wet, or you call them as Dhamvi, Balgami, Safravi, or Sodavi. So we classify them in the, these four groups. And this classification, which is called as Ajnasa, which is based on the Ajnasa Ashra, we classify people based on some physical features, uh, mostly on physical features, but some physiological and psychological traits as well. So uh, what we are doing here in Yunani medicine, we classify people on the basis of certain characteristics, which are mainly physical and uh, some physical and psychological and then based on that classification we uh, we claim that the predisposition to the disease vary in mizaj groups in these groups which we classify and the predisposition to disease some uh, temperament some mizaj have uh, you know much tendency to acquire some diseases some uh, other mizaj has other tendency for other diseases similarly drug response differs in these mizaj groups this is also a claim which we do in Yunani medicine and one important thing is that these uh, uh, these groups, these uh, mizaj groups, which we classify on Ajnas Ashra, they also vary in their physiological capacities. So what we are actually doing, we are pre predicting a genotype based of, uh, from a phenotype. You know, it, so it's very difficult to predict the genotype from the phenotype because many factors, especially the environmental factors and development, plays a major role uh, along with the genes to form a phenotype. But somehow, Yunani physicians, the Persian physicians, they classified people on the basis of the physical features and some physiological and psychological features and uh, predicted some you know, genotypic outcomes. So hence, uh, uh, most appropriate study would be the genetic studies, I think. But uh, since uh, in 2004, when I was doing MD, the genetic studies were not possible at our institution because of the lack of the facilities and other things. So I decided to choose a middle path and study the proteins or enzymes because, you know, uh, the genes finally they reflect as the proteins in our, uh, in our body. The genes form the enzymes or proteins. So here, uh, in this way, I formed a hypothesis that persons with different temperament, mizaj, differ in their functional capacities. And since every physiological process of body is somehow dependent on enzyme, enzymatic activity, Therefore, the determination of enzymatic status may indicate the possible difference in functional capacity. Enzymes also govern the rate of sequential and discrete biochemical reactions, which are vehicles for physiological process. Exchange, therefore, in enzymatic activity due either to enzyme concentration or to varying concentration of cir circulating hormones would certainly modify the nature of physiological process. The physiological processes are concerned mainly with the needs, apparent behavior, and functions of a person. It's therefore obvious that varying enzymatic activity means the varying physiological processes, which would in turn modify the function of the body and its various organs. So in the nutshell, uh, because the different visage groups vary in the, phys phys in the physiological capacities, and it is the enzymes that somehow regulate these physiological cap capacities, so it was hypothesized that if a person of different if persons of different temperament different differ in their functions, there should be also some difference in their enzyme levels. So this was the hypothesis, and for that I chose an enzyme alkaline phosphatase. And uh, why the enzyme alkaline phosphatase was chosen for this study? So I have uh, uh, mentioned few reasons here. Firstly, a major fraction of alkaline phosphatase is derived from liver. And uh, according to the Yunani medicine or Persian medicine, liver plays an important role in the formation of temperament. Secondly, alkaline phosphatase shows variations according to the sex and age. So does the temperament. Because temperament also varies with the sex and with the age. 
and then phosphate also show these directions. Third uh, important one, the predisposition to disease is also determined by the temperament of the person. Similarly, some diseases have shown to depend on a person's blood group and secretor status. Excuse me, they have alkaline phosphatase in their saliva. The blood group and the secretor status in turn have shown to influence the presence of intestinal alkaline phosphatase in serum. So these were the few reasons uh, for choosing the alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Now coming to the material and methods, the study was performed on 52 male volunteers which were selected from the college uh, in which I was studying, Elite Muslim University. And the age of the male student was between 20 to 33 years. And each uh, volunteer was subject to detailed history and uh, full clinical examination to rule out that uh, they have no disease and they are all healthy. So only healthy male uh, subjects were uh, selected for the study which were aged between 20 and 33 years. And uh, we measured the height, weight, and body mass index uh, among these volunteers. And there are the methods. Height was measured in centimeters using an anthropometric rod. Weight was measured on a scale with sensitivity of 500 grams. And uh, BMI was uh, you know, calculated by the formula of uh, weight uh, by height, and, uh, weight in kgs and height divided by height in height scale in meters. After the determination of temperament, the volunteers were randomly called for venipuncture and their serum alkaline phosphatase estimation was done. So after uh, measuring height, weight, BMI, also the temperament was determined. They were divided into different groups according to the temperament. And finally, they were called for venipuncture and their uh, serum was obtained and alkaline phosphatase was done. The alkaline phosphatase estimation was done by Kind and King's method. Uh, and uh, before taking the samples, all the volunteers were advised to remain at fast overnight before the blood samples were drawn. Uh, the all uh, volunteers assumed a sting position 30 minutes before uh, venipuncture. Uh, the tourniquet was applied not more than 30 seconds and 5 ml blood was drawn from the median cubital vein through an 18 gauge needle. Uh, the blood specimens were allowed to plot at the room temperature and then centrifuged within an hour of venipuncture. Venipuncture, the sera was obtained and assayed within two hours of the venipuncture. So here are the results. Uh, we, uh, after analysis of temperament among the 52 uh, subjects, we found that we had Dhamvi, Balgavi and Safravi uh, uh, subjects there. No, no Sodavi was found in them uh, as per the Ajnas Ashra and, uh, estimation of the Nizaj. 18 were Dhamvi, 12 were Balgavi and uh, 22 were Safravi. They are the free uh, percentage of these uh, subjects and this is the cumulative total percentage. Uh, age, height, weight and BMI, they were all uh, measured and then analyzed uh, between Dungi, Belgami and Safari because now we had only three groups. It was seen that, uh, that uh, when they were, uh, their means were calculated, it was seen that uh, there was no significant difference in the age, in the height and in the weight. Of, uh, between the Dhamvi, Balgami and Safravi individuals. However, BMI was a different, uh, different between these groups. As far as L L alkaline phosphatase is concerned, it was also, you know, the mean was calculated as mean and SD was calculated between the, uh, these groups. And uh, it was found that uh, the uh, mean alkaline phosphatase was higher in Dhamvi and Safravi subjects as compared to the Balgami subjects. And after statistical analysis, it was found that the alkaline phosphatase of only Dhamvi was statistically significant against the Balgami instrument. That is, Dhamvi had statistically more alkaline phosphatase than the Balgami individuals. And results were significant at P uh, less than 0.05. Now, let us uh, discuss these results. Uh, the mean ALP of both Dhamvi and Safravi group was found higher, as I already told you, as compared to Palgami groups. But statistically, only the mean ALP of Dhamvi group was found significantly higher. That is statistically significant. Our study has report, reported ALP activity to be significantly raised in overweight females, but not in overweight males. At this point, this just discussion point, why I'm explaining this, because 
as far as the age or height or weight was concerned there was no significant difference in the groups because bmi was uh, different between the groups so uh, when when all other factors were uh, were not differing between the groups the only factor that was differing between these groups was either the mizaj or the bmi so it was very essential for us to 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 con uh, to, to make a point that uh, the difference in the alkaline phosphate is, is not due to the bmi but it is due to the temperament therefore in this discussion i have shown that the variations which we see in enzyme alkaline phosphate is, is not due to the bmi but due to the mizaj so uh, here i have mentioned that one study has reported alp activity to be significantly raised in overweight females but not in overweight males so there is a difference between uh, the bmi uh, alkaline phosphate is and bmi but that was in females and not in males as our subjects were only males so this uh, this uh, this result does not apply to our study similarly another study found uh, study found no significant correlation of alp activity with total body weight in males another study found no uh, relation of alkaline phosphate is with the body weight in the males therefore the difference in the mean bmi between the male dummy bulgami and safravi group found in the present study may be assumed not to have any effect on the mean alp of these three groups thus the difference in the alp level found in our study is due to the reasons other than difference in bmi that's why you are coming to the point the exact reason for high mean alp in male dummy group cannot be explained at present however it may be said that the difference in the main alp between these groups is more likely due to the difference in the temperament so here in the study we have tried to conclude as the bmi uh, has a, is, uh, is irrelevant uh, with the body mass index therefore whatever the differences we found in the enzyme activity alp levels in the dumbi and bulgami group it is uh, most probably due to the difference in their mizaj now why uh, why why the the, the uh, alp is higher uh, as compared to bulgami um, enzyme why alp enzyme is higher in dummy as compared to bulgami we have also tried in this paper to give some of the justification probable justifications no not, none of them is confirmed dummy individu individuals are usually more active than bulgami persons this is what we believe in nani medicine whereas bulgami persons are sluggish in their physical activities Dummy persons also have a muscular build and wide bone structure. So, based on these distinct temperamental features of dummy individuals, the probable reason, probable reason for a higher mean ALP of dummy group may be higher amounts of circulating testosterone in their blood, because dummy persons being more muscular. You know the testosterone hormone, the muscle development in males. because males have a higher muscle mass than females and it has been attributed to the high levels of testosterone in the males so through this uh, this uh, argument we have tried to prove this that because dumb, why dummy individuals have high alkaline phosphate is because dummy individuals have uh, more muscle mass than the bulgami individuals another point uh, uh, as it has been demonstrated that intestinal alkaline phosphatase level is normally under the adrenal control and that the hydrocortisone administration produces large increase in the intestinal alp activity so it has also been seen in i have given the reference in certain studies that hydrocortisone administration increases the intestinal alp activity that is the which will ultimately increase the total serum alp activity now both the testosterone and uh, the hydrocortisone they are steroids so it's also one of the probable reasons that dummy may have higher uh, alp levels there is sufficient evidence to consider enzyme induction as a process which could explain the elevation in tissue and in serum alkaline phosphatase level another uh, justification for higher uh, alp in dummy is that because the dummy persons have uh, a comparatively wider skeletal frame uh, than the other groups and so the contribution of the bone alp in to the serum may be higher actually al alkaline phosphatase has many isoenzyme forms uh, like intestinal uh, alkaline phosphate isoenzyme there is bone isoenzyme and there is kidney isoenzyme and then liver isoenzyme so uh, higher uh, bigger skeletal uh, frame means the bone contribution to the serum alp may be higher in the dummy that is the reason why we found higher uh, alkaline phosphate levels in dummy cells 
Another probable reason may be that Damvi persons have a, in physiologically increased anterohepatic circulation. Uh, this is related to the bilary alkaline phosphatase uh, can be reabsorbed in anterohepatic circulation. And, or, or there may be relatively more production of the enzyme AL, ALP by the bile canal equally in the Damvi subject. So we have in this discussion uh, given some of the probable reasons for having the higher ALP level in Damvi. Dummy subject. So in this study in the nutshell we found that the alkaline phosphatase levels were statistically significantly higher in dummy as compared to the bulgami group. Second thing we try to defend it that this difference is purely uh, is most probably due, temperamental due to mesage and not due to the BMI. And third in discussion we try to justify we try to give probable reasons why why this ALP is higher in the dummy individuals. Now, this is also a part of discussion which I have uh, put in the paper and it was very important. So here it is obligated to mention that apart from genetic factors, many other factors are responsible for the inter-individual variation of enzymes. Usually in physiological studies, we find this variation of enzymes in different people. And uh, here I have tried to say that uh, apart from genetic factors, there are many other factors which are involved working from both inside and outside the body. The enzymatic variations are in turn reflected as difference in the various physiological, biochemical and metabolic processes collectively with morphological and psychological peculiarities called mesage or temperament. Therefore, the temperament enzyme studies should be conducted in conjunction with various physiological, endocrine and metabolic studies. However, such studies can be attempted separately but any inference therefrom should invariably be made on the holistic lines as any conclusion on the basis of a single, a single parameter could be misleading. So here I have suggested that uh, whenever we do the uh, temperamental studies, we cannot you know, make a conclusion just on one single enzyme, but we have to take into consideration the other endocrine factors and metabolic studies as well so that uh, in, uh, in total we can make a, a very you know, sound conclusion regarding these differences in different temperaments. So the conclusion which I have present in this study, in this paper, is that uh, dummy temperament or mesage have physiologically higher levels of serial alkaline phosphatase. Now, coming to the limitations of the study, which I have not mentioned uh, in the paper, uh, but here I am just mentioning some. First is the mesage questionnaire. Well, at the time when this paper was published in 2004, uh, usually there was no uh, valid reproducible, uh, reproducible or published method available for the estimation of mesage. All we did that time is that we used Ajnas Ashra and a questionnaire based on Ajnas Ashra prepared by the Central Council for Research and Medicine at that time. We used that questionnaire for estimation of the temperament. And uh, I don't know why. This, uh, this uh, questionnaire was not uh, appended in this paper. Somehow it got missed. Some deficiencies, yes, in this paper. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Danishwar uh, was uh, quite, quite angry with, with, with my paper and he has given a very valuable review of this paper. And even uh, somebody, if somebody sent me this paper right now for, uh, for, for review, I would have given almost the same review which uh, Dr. Danishwath has given in this group. I, I thank you, Dr. Danishwath, for that. It was a very uh, meticulous, very keen review of this paper. Definitely, there are some you know, deficiencies in sample size because this is a physiological study. You know, the sample size should not be less than 2,000. But given the, given, the, the, given the situation that we were MD students and we are just uh, doing this research for, for the you know, partial fulfillment of our thesis work, so we had many limitations of time and, uh, and budget and all that. So sample size definitely should have been very large. And further studies, which I always missed that this should have been conducted because alkaline phosphatase has many ISO enzymes. And I think I think that those, those ISO enzyme studies, uh, either I should have done them later uh, as a part of my research or they should have been included in this study. And one more limitation, I think, which uh, even Dr. Danish Patrin mentioned in his review is that uh, the age which I took uh, uh, of the subjects was between 20 to 33, which is quite a large group. And I think that age group should have been divided into two and uh, the inter uh, age group evaluation must have also been done for statistical purposes. Thank you very much.
Uh, this was about this uh, my article. Uh, uh, thank you very much, dear Dr. Farooq, uh, for your good presentation. And I think uh, your work at that time in the uh, 1911 um, um, uh, is a very novel uh, work, and um, uh, I appreciate uh, for your work. And um, uh, inshallah, we will uh, show uh, more work about this field from you and your colleagues from Aligarh University of Medica. Um, and um, I, I, I ask um, other colleagues uh, to uh, um, tell your, their comments and ask my dear uh, colleague, Dr. Danish Fahr, to, to manage the decision as a moderator and, uh, uh, and, and so we, we want to uh, here uh, from um, Dr. Uh, Professor Rashid Bikha about your good suggestions, inshallah. If so there are any questions, I'm ready to take them. Okay. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, please, Dr. Uh, Younes Monshi. Uh, Dr. Danish Fahr, please manage the session. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank a lot, uh, dear Dr. Faro, for your presentation. Uh, first, I need to mention that there's no angriness about your paper. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, a lighter note. I mean, that it was, it was very nice. Yes, it was very, very, you know, it was very thank clinging. you very much. I, I, I was to uh, confirm that the, your uh, research was very interesting, and as Dr. Mojahedi said, uh, uh, it's quietly acceptable uh, for that time, but uh, we need to review our previous works, we need to compare it, and we need to share our experience it just to uh, design much more better and more rigorous uh, research designs uh, for future studies. And uh, another point that I have to uh, mention that many of these points and many of uh, these uh, review contents were done by Dr. Mujahidi himself. Of course, I confirmed them. And just I want to add, add some other uh, points. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the main challenge uh, uh, in such studies related to the uh, assessment of temperament uh, in Iran, of course, uh, as well in our colleagues' works, uh, is the designing and, you know, uh, forming a, a standard tool and uh, an acceptable standard tool for assessing the uh, message or temperament in different groups. Uh, as we discussed in a, a, our previous session, last month, uh, you know, we have to decide uh, how to categorize different groups of massage. We have simple massage as, based on the quadruple qualities of hotness, coldness, wetness, dryness, and the combined ones, as you mentioned in your study. Uh, of course, you, you choose the name of the humors as Balgami, Sapravi, Sodavi. Uh, while uh, in our uh, Persian medicine or Yunani medicine sources, uh, the, the very concept of mizaj or temperament is uh, uh, presented and expressed by the uh, description of the qualities. For example, the, the temperament of hotness or warmness and dryness. Uh, and the, the term sanguine or blood or dam is just, just referring to the very humor. And the, so the excess of humors, which refer to the distemperaments or overcome of a specific type of the uh, humors, is much uh, more appropriate for assessing such uh, clinical status uh, of the different types of distemperaments. So I think, you know, we have to come in, in a common point, in a common uh, terminology to use in our research is to express or uh, works just uh, in a similar uh, vocabulary and terminology. So, uh, you know, in our future studies, you know, we have to consider uh, some specific types of types of the classification of the Nizaj groups uh, uh, and some, uh, you know, accepted uh, common terminology for uh, expressing these concepts uh, to avoid the confusion, especially for someone who is outside of uh, such type of treatments and sub, uh, such type of, types of uh, the theories of the Yunani medicine or Persian medicine, traditional medicine. Uh, so we have to discuss them in our uh, future studies. 
uh, thank you again for your. Uh, uh, may I may say something yes. about this? Yes, yes, of course. Allowed? Yeah, actually, uh, the, you have also uh, raised this query in your in your review of this paper. Actually, uh, in uh, in here in India, we have been you know studying this massage and uh, for several years now. And it has there has been a lot of debate on the you know, the types of the visage, how many types actually exist, and even there have been uh, certain uh, who advocated that there are nine types of visage, some advocated there are five types of visage, and uh, you know about this uh, humoral classification and the property based classification, and even it has been argued that if we say dumbi, it does not mean humoral, it means as uh, a person is uh, hot and wet, uh, it, it, it's just a label. Uh, and uh, regarding uh, the, those individual nine uh, nine types of temperaments, I, uh, previously I also said that it is quite debatable because uh, in, 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 uh, uh, even the Ibn Sina in his uh, book uh, Canon book, he said that these uh, these qualities uh, does not exist in solitarity. They do not exist in, uh, in, in, uh, in alone. You know, whenever there is a quality which is hot, and uh, you know some uh, munfala will always be there some uh, either it will be dry or wet so you will always have a combination of uh, two qualities in any person uh, theoret uh, theoretically it may be nine but practically uh, it is always a combination because the statement uh, i can give you the reference for that that they don't exist in solitary for example hot only hot uh, quality will not exist it will have a cafe uh, munfa means uh, the another property like wet or dry with it so combination will always be there that will reduce uh, from nine to i think five so well uh, i i think i agree with you that there should be some uh, some consensus that we should come to a common terms uh, all because uh, finally it is the it is the, for the benefit of the system uh, whether unani or persian you call it unani medicine or persian medicine we have to have some common, uh, you know, classification of this message so that we can present our studies in a uniform, in a standard way to the outside world. I agree with that. And uh, another query which uh, which was raised about the statistical method, I agree with that, uh, that it should have been the ANOVA. Let me tell you one thing about in 2004, and this is very interesting. And in 2004, now you have SPSS. I know uh, you, the younger generation have SPSS. You can exactly derive the p-value to, to, to five digits or ten digits. At that time, we used to derive p-values and then we used to say whether p is less than 0 0.05 or more than 0 0.05. So we didn't have uh, access to the SPSS that time. We used to go to a biostatistician. We had a biostatistician there. Uh, we knew little about the research methodology. My colleagues are here. They know very well. That biostatistician, we present our data to that uh, guy and he used to give us the whole uh, you know, esti estimation of the data. Look, this is your data, this is your p-value, this is your p-value, that is all. But then when I uh, you know, uh, published the study, I also realized because there were through three groups involved, it should have been ANOVA. But uh, despite that, in, in spite of that, uh, this, uh, this study holds because even after uh, ANOVA, you do a post hoc analysis either the two key or the uh, I think I remember one for only whatever you take uh, so this 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 analysis which I have done in the study may be taken as as a post hoc intergroup variations and uh, that still holds uh, true and uh, it does not invalidate that but yes I agree with you that it had should have been an ANOVA design uh, the special method should have been ANOVA and thank you for that and uh, your review was really very nice as I already told that if somebody has sent me this paper to me right now, I would have done the same type of review. But uh, regarding the classification of Mizaj, yes, definitely we have to sit together and uh, inshallah and hopefully we will uh, reach to some, you know, some solid conclusion, some uh, fruitful conclusion. Inshallah. inshallah. Thank you very much, Dr. Farooq. Uh, uh, very much uh, thanks. <laughs> Representation. I, I, of course, regarding the grouping of the mizaj, I accept that the these four main types of combined uh, mizaj are more common, and even maybe some, uh, some other types of grouping. Uh, but what is uh, again, I want to uh, just just to mention it again that the main challenge is uh, designing a standard tool and a standard questionnaire, which is uh, validated and. Uh, uh, could be compared with other studies with the same tools so still the main challenge is the questionnaire of uh, assessing the temperament 
Another point that uh, I just read your paper about your justification and explanation for uh, explaining that uh, why the alkaline phosphatase in the uh, gamma V uh, mesage individuals were significantly higher compa in comparison with the phlegmatics or balgamy individuals uh, was the, this fact that the uh, gamma V mesage uh, persons are, uh, are, are mostly uh, are more active and more uh, doing more activity in comparison with the Balkanese but uh, there is a it could be asked that why the uh, Safrabi massage for example which are uh, suggest, just just supposed to have more activity in comparison with the uh, Balkanese of course uh, why, why they had not uh, higher uh, uh, level of uh, alkaline phosphatase. Yeah, that's why I have given two other reasons. One is the more muscle mass. You know, down we have more muscle mass as compared to both Safravi and uh, Balgami. So it is not uh, only due to their level of activity? No, no, no not, not only due to the level of activity. Another reason is the higher muscle mass, so which is higher in. And third, I have given the wider bone frame. So it probably it is the bone alkaline phosphatase which is contributing to the higher serum alkaline phosphatase. So these two reasons, because Safri have, have a narrow uh, you know, uh, bone frame as compared to the Dambi. Okay, thank you. Uh, other colleagues, please, if uh, anyone want to join us in discussing about uh, the paper uh, or presenting his own or her own points. Uh, Dr. Yunus, uh, Mr. Yunus Monshi. Yeah, uh, okay. let me introduce myself. Yes, please. I'm Dr. Yunus Munshi, I'm working as Jubilee in the Central Council for Research and Hello. Dr. Munshi, your voice quality is low, please. Uh, okay, Maybe can some you internet try? issue because uh, I'm, I'm okay. in a room. So uh, yes, my basically I joined late. I am sorry for that. I, I just I just saw the conclusion of the uh, of uh, Dr. Farouk's uh, presentation. Although uh, the work at that time it it it, it is very much uh, uh, to the point and and, and very much effective uh, study whatever he has done. Uh, but uh, as I said, I'm confident that uh, temperament is al almost affected by the uh, environment where you live. Uh, you, you see that that, that uh, irritability or or, or uh, subconsciousness that that uh, you know in, in Safravi you, you see that there is there is irritability and uh, there, is, there is more aggressiveness, uh, which can be due to environmental factors also. So, is there any relation between the psychological effect, psychological activity, and temperament of the of the person? Number one. Number two. If if you are you are you are saying that there are enzymatic changes in different temperaments, um, shall we take it as as uh, if if we are we are going to to see a safari person that he will be having some uh, enzymes more, or in in phlegmatic person it will be less. Is it like that? So, Dr. Yunus Munshi, are these uh, questions uh, directed to me? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. So, uh, regarding your first question uh, about the psychological traits, uh, you know, my study was actually about the enzymes, and I cannot say about the psychological traits. But yes, I in, 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 the, in the beginning of my presentation, I have said that, you know, uh, the phenotype, uh, which is the basis of our classification of visage, is definitely affected by the environment. Uh, that's why it has always been a challenge to predict uh, a, g a genotype from a phenotype because environment and uh, the, the, the development plays a very important role there. So uh, environmental factors definitely, Yunani physicians, uh, the Persian physicians have mentioned uh, different factors, even the climate, even the profession, even the, you know, uh, everything, uh, even the food, they have going, they are going to affect the temperament of a person, the large of a person. Definitely, environment has a, a very profound effect on the formation of the visage. That's 
Second thing is I all, uh, only conducted one, uh, I tested one enzyme in, 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 a, in a very small population. And to draw a conclusion that uh, all the enzymes uh, will be varying uh, between uh, between different groups, I cannot with confidence for sure. Uh, uh, and enzymes we have to study and the sample uh, size uh, must be large and after that a uh, very solid con uh, conclusion can be drawn. That's why I said that in not in, in, even in solitary you cannot uh, uh, study the enzymes alone. You have to you know by the side you have to study the hormones also the variation in hormones because hormonal activities also influence the enzyme activities and vice versa. So uh, at this point uh, from this uh, this small study I cannot draw such a large conclusion. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, uh, because yeah, yeah, we, we don't have enough time, uh, dear Dr. Younes. Um, uh, our dear master and uh, veteran, Dr. Um, Rashid Biha, uh, is in our uh, session, and uh, we eagerly would like to use uh, her uh, valuable opinions. Uh, um, please, Dr. Rashid Biha, we are at your service. First of all, Jazakallah Khair for, for me being, being joining the group. And, and at the outset, let me mention that yes, uh, the, the, the actual work done by Fadl Dahar and his, and his colleagues definitely has got some aspects of contribution to the overall picture. Ultimately, take, bearing in mind the holistic nature of, of uh, Yunani, Persian, Kip, etc., it's all body, mind, and soul. So ultimately, you know, uh, the area, that's an area that we've been working on, alhamdulillah, for the last 20 years. In other words, in other words, our, our evaluation form takes into account physical, mental, emotional. It ought to look into account frame, et cetera, et cetera. But I think what is more significant in our research that we've done over the years is that, that it's virtually impossible to, to identify a person into a single temperamental type because there's always been overlap, all right? And in a way, alhamdulillah, over the past 20 years, you know, what we've come to understanding that each person is a combination of a dominant and a subdominant temperament. And also taking into account the qualities associated with each temperamental type, sanguinous being hot and moist, and melancholic being cold and dry, etc. This aspect of Qualities play a very important role in, in not only uh, um, identifying the, the, the quality of certain with the temperament, but also the link between the temperament, the qualities, and the predisposition to illness conditions, as well as, as in terms of lifestyle factors. So I'm hopeful that, that you know, being a part of the team, you know, I would really love to, 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 to share the some of the work that we've done. And ultimately, we are a team. We are a team to work together. We are a team to promote the system, and most certainly, globally, there is a revival of the system. You know, so, so for us to work together as a team and, and take whatever we have, build on it, go forward in a lot more research, this is something that I think all, all of us are very happy to do and all of us should be doing. So, in a way, I'm looking forward to possibly participating within the next month or two on, on the Institute's work on, on, on the temperament, not only on the temperament itself, but in, in relation to the humor, in relation to, in relation to lifestyle factors in health promotion and predisposition to illness conditions. So I'm looking forward to, to, to be able to share what work we've done here in South Africa with all of you, and again, always you know, embracing, accepting whatever comments, whatever uh, feedback, but ultimately it's all, it's feedback that matters. Feedback to share, feedback to develop, feedback to communicate, feedback to grow the system globally, inshallah. Thank you very much, Professor Bikha. That's a great uh, uh, hope for us, just for to, join, to see you joining us in this group and uh, Surely we will learn from you in next sessions. Uh, but for now, I just want to ask you if you uh, have come to any 
a qu standard questionnaire or any uh, standard uh, assessment tool for uh, determining the message of the uh, individuals based on your own experience during these years? Well, um, definitely I have, because in fact, from in fact, even before 2000, you know, when I started looking at this aspect from, from I also studied Ayurveda, and, and looking at all the, the different questionnaires that, that were available, and over between 1997 and, and 2000, we, we experimented with many different questionnaires, and currently the one that we have now is more than what we use for the last 18, 20 years. And, and, and again, it was field tested, I would say, right now, thousands of people, alhamdulillah. So I think, yes, yes and it's a very simplified version. Okay, it's not as, as, as intricate as, as, as a presentation, you know, not going into the, into the biochemical parameters, et cetera. It's just simple, simple question that we have, and it's on our website, it's all available. And I will also just mention, that the Institute has launched an uh, e-learning tip program since December last year. And now, and, and in this learning program, the key element is for participants of the aim at the consumer level, simplified version of the tip principles, for participants to be able to identify their own temperament. And then based on that, we then link your temperament, your dominant quality, and we give you a, a, a advice on the lifestyle factors that will promote health, and even, even our research has shown that the most people over the age of 40, 50, there is certain uh, uh, moral imbalances. And the, one of our research has focused on, 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 the, on the abnormal excess in melancholic tumor being the cause of most chronic conditions, which, which develop from the age of 45, 50 onwards. So a lot of this we've done and I must tell you, from the about 300 odd people who signed up on our course, we've, we've now completed about 40, 50 of them. And they come back to us, and then we do an interview with one of our tip doctors from our clinics. Sometimes I also join, just to guide them. First of all, reaffirm their, their temperament as, as it was a part of the course. And then secondly, give them a lifestyle advice to stay, for young people, to stay healthy and well, and for older people with, with chronic conditions, how to better manage their, 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 their uh, lifestyle, again, linked onto their chronic conditions, but ultimately based on temperament. It's all about temperament, inshallah. But I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sharing this with you guys, inshallah. Okay. Inshallah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mujahidi, we are at your service as we have uh, just about 10 minutes to the end of our session. Uh, Thank you very much, dear uh, Professor uh, Rashid Bikha, for your uh, good attention, for your good opinion. Uh, inshallah, we will work together, all of us in the world, and we will um, uh, establish and produce the uh, um, good uh, um, evidence about the basis of Yunani Persian medicine, inshallah, um, by the um, uh, cooperation of methodologists and other majors about this field, inshallah. Um, other colleagues, if is there any question, any suggestion about the work and about the uh, uh, future schedules and other things, please uh, tell your opinions. Hello. Hello. Can we go for the validation of the of the of the already existing questionnaire uh, for humor theory or temperamental care? Because we don't have any any valid questionnaire at present. If we go for the validation of already existing the questionnaires uh, throughout the globe uh, as per the United System of Medicine. That can prove, uh, I think, uh, better for, for the fraternity in future roles. Dr. Munshi, is your question about the questionnaire of Dr. Farooq or you're, you're generally asking about the, any possible question? 
it is in general for the for the group group members since they are working on the temperament that is it is it is in general for the group members okay about the question of dr farouk uh, i think it's better to uh, be explained by he himself but i know that uh, there are some standard question and uh, one of the most uh, common known of them and most valid them uh, are is prepared by dr mujahidi himself that he may want to uh, give us a short explanation about it and in more detail uh, inshallah in future uh, session but Dr. Far, can you explain more about your question and its validation? Nasima. Well uh, Dr. Munshi uh, this is the, uh, the suggestion yeah. which, uh, which you have given is we have been you know uh, uh, this question has been bothering us for many years now that we don't have a valid and reproducible method for uh, estimation of temperament. You know, I have always uh, said this and I still uh, you know, stand on this question that for uh, clinical purposes, when you are in a clinic and you are assessing the temperament of a person, a person, you don't uh, need uh, in a, a standard questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Our Yunani uh, our person physicians have been doing it with ease for, uh, for many centuries. Even now we at clinics, we can easily uh, estimate the temperament of a person, mizaj of a person. But when it comes to the research, you need a, you know, a, a, a standard, a universal, a valid uh, method and yes for research purposes we are yes, lacking a standard method for estimation of mizaj and uh, for many years from india uh, i have already said in the last last lecture also uh, last discussion also that uh, from india there has been a little bit of disappointment in the sense that no such uh, uh, published you know method has been uh, given so far however from iran i have seen uh, three uh, attempts uh, three publications regarding uh, this uh, a valid questionnaire, a, a uh, standard questionnaire. And as uh, Dr. Danish Fard has uh, mentioned that it, one has been prepared by uh, Dr. Mujahidi himself. So I think uh, it's better that Dr. Mujahidi answers this question. Uh, uh, this will, that will be better. Thank you very much. As Dr. Danish Fard and Dr. Farooq mentioned, uh, we have uh, some uh, standard questionnaire in Iran in Persian language, but uh, for uh, use in other countries, it's need to uh, change uh, um, uh, scientifically to the language of that country, um, and um, it, it may it can be uh, some um, 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 plan some uh, project for. Uh, translation the Persian questionnaire to the English, Urdu, and other language uh, uh, during the scientific method, inshallah. And we are ready to help all of uh, my colleagues in the countries. Uh, we, uh, and so we have uh, some uh, expert methodologies, epidemiologists, and uh, uh, statistical uh, colleagues in Iran that they have, ex they are experts in the uh, field of uh, Persian medicine and can help us to design good uh, project uh, uh, for uh, standardization and uh, the developing um, uh, diagnostic questionnaire about the measures, about the uh, sewer measures, about the uh, disease according to the basis of uh, Persian uh, Yunnan medicine, inshallah. Uh, um, and inshallah, as uh, Professor Rashid Bihar mentioned, uh, we will uh, do some good works and big works in the future by the cooperation each other, inshallah. Uh, dear Dr. Danish, we don't have enough time, and if uh, uh, any person have a suggestion, uh, please ask them to uh, discuss about the um, uh, article about the subject and about the new uh, comments about the future. Yes, we are hearing uh, if any person has any comment or suggestion for future studies. We would be happy to hear. Dr. Donish may I say something? Yes, of course, please. Uh, hello to everyone, especially uh, the Indian colleagues uh, who know me from the negotiations we had a year ago. And of course, the others. Uh, hi to Dr. Danishka, Dr. Mujahidi, our Iranian colleagues. Uh, I'm not so clear on the issue of validity, statistics, the questionnaires that we have at hand. It's uh, around two years that we are talking about this, 
uh, I know that the only valid questionnaire that I know is Dr. Mujahideen's. And given the fact that the foundations of the two medical systems in two countries is the same, uh, Dr. Mujahideen mentioned that the, the, the only reason that his questionnaire is not used by our Indian friends is that it is not translated into the Indian languages, Hindi or others. Uh, but I was thinking that uh, there's a difference between the two countries. I think we have now both Persian and English versions of Dr. Mojoyedi's questionnaire. And English, uh, although it is a foreign language in Iran, it is a second language in India. Uh, many people know the language. So I think we can already use the questionnaire, at least for those who, who understand English, even before translating it to Indian languages. So. I, I want to see what are uh, the practical barriers to this, because, uh, or in other way, if you want to put it, what are the steps that we should take to make it practical to, because I think the idea uh, of Dr. Mojahedi when he started this work was to make it global, to make it available to other countries, and uh, there's a long time that it is available, but it is not being used by others. I think if you want to wait, uh, nothing happens. So I'm not clear what should we do to, this is a case, this is one of the cases, because I know about this. Maybe our Indian colleagues, they have some uh, uh, other cases that in some way it is validated, but it is not known by others, it is not used by others. So how should we exactly make this connection and make it practical? So that's the question. If uh, Dr. Donish Farag, Dr. Mojahedi, anyone, because uh, after two years, still I don't know about the mentality the, of the Indian colleagues. What, this is a uh, plain question. What is the reason that Dr. Mojahedi's questions cannot be used by them to uh, determine results, at least in, for research purposes? I know that uh, clinically they can do it. But as it was mentioned, for research purposes, we do need a valid questionnaire. Uh, and based on the data obtained from this, then we can make conclusions, we can make claims, generalizations. So it is available. So what's the problem? Why is it not being used? Thank you very much, Dr. Shams, for your question. Dr. Farb, uh, do you have any comment for this yeah. issue? Yes. As well, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Shams has raised a very nice question. If the questionnaire of Dr. Mujahid is available, why it is not used in India? Uh, first, I don't know. Uh, there may be like, some communication gap, first of all, because uh, being in the Mizaj research for so many years, uh, I haven't uh, seen a, a proper questionnaire for estimation of Mizaj. So maybe it has not reached to us, reason number one. Reason number two, uh, you know, this is the scientific rule, scientific rule which applies to all. If there is a method which is published in a reputed journal, everybody has to use that method unless and until you don't publish a next better method than that, or you, you have some objections, published objections to that method. So if that is a published method by uh, Dr. Mujahidi, uh, and, and it has been published in a reputed journal, so it, it, this, this has to be used by every researcher till uh, something better comes out. So if, if that is available, I think uh, there is only some, maybe it's a communication gap which is that this questionnaire has not reached, uh, reached us. And uh, I have searched many journals, I have seen uh, studies, definitely there are three publications from Iran which I have studied. And they have you know, estimated the validity of the each question in a questionnaire. But finally, uh, in those papers, I didn't see a, a final questionnaire for a researcher to use. And as far as clinical purposes is concerned, I already said for clinical purposes, I don't think we need a, it is good if we have a valid questionnaire, but it is not that necessary as, as much it is necessary for the research purposes that we should have a universal, a standard, a valid, a reproducible method. I think a lack of communication. Yeah, thank you very much. I think that's the key word, miscommunication and now I want to direct it to Dr. Mujahedi and what he thinks about how should 
this miscommunication be overcome somehow? Uh, what is yeah. missing here? You, you have published your article, so what's wrong? Uh, yeah, as uh, Dr. Farouk mentioned, uh, I think our Indian colleagues are interested in scientific work, but uh, we have not uh, had enough connects with uh, each other so far. And uh, the, due to um, uh, international connection and uh, due to uh, Mizaj research and Shalla project, we will connect to each other and we will cooperate with each other and we will more inform about the, our work and our uh, documents, inshallah. And uh, we will uh, try to have a, a workshop uh, in the future. In the near future, we will have a workshop on instrument design and validation uh, in, uh, uh, in the field of uh, Yunani Persian medicine, inshallah. And we'll uh, inform all colleagues about the uh, workshop and they will use the method of the design and validation of the standard tools, inshallah. And uh, I think, I hope that uh, my colleagues in the India, in the South Africa, in the other countries, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and other countries, and um, start uh, designing and validation um, um, diagnostic uh, questionnaire and checklist, uh, and our team in Iran we will help all each other we want to uh, start these projects, inshallah. Thank you very much for your good uh, question and for your good uh, uh, answer, Dr. Farouk and Dr. Shams. You're welcome. Thank you. I forgot to thank for today's presentation. I'm sorry if my question was not directly related to it, but that was a concern that I had to voice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shams. Uh, of course, your question was very important, and thanks for your presenting this important issue and uh, Dr. Mujahidi, I, I just right now I want to invite you I think that uh, it is a necessity for one of our next session or certain working health that you present the, uh, the current available diagnostic tools for the uh, assessment of mesage at least for general mesage of the individuals uh, what has done scientifically and what uh, kind of standard tools are available now. Uh, of course, actually uh, focusing on your own projects and your last version, last validated version of your questionnaire and just uh, presenting it uh, to your colleagues and just discussing in how to uh, and just, just, just uh, introduce the most validated and most uh, uh, and, and better and the most, uh, uh, the best uh, way for assessment of the uh, scientific assessment of mesage uh, for uh, future studies and introduce it uh, to our colleagues in different countries and uh, uh, to just make it uh, much more uh, uh, available and much more known for all of us uh, to be considered in future studies and uh, maybe just uh, just just uh, designing the future studies for uh, uh, increasing the validity and the accuracy of such uh, standard tools. Uh, I think it's a necessity for all of us. Um, yes, uh, inshallah, uh, we will present all our uh, questionnaire. We ha as you know, uh, we have um, some questionnaire for. Um, uh, total body massage and some questionnaire uh, for uh, liver massage, uh, stomach massage, and brain massage. Uh, uh, all of them are in uh, Persian language, uh, and all of them they designed and developed uh, uh, as a methodological, the exactly exact methodological um, uh, method uh, by the uh, over supervision of the methodologies, a team of methodologists in Iran and we will present and the, uh, the Mizaj research uh, website is the focal point of the, uh, our about our uh, information uh, about our document and we will uh, upload the questionnaire and their uh, articles and uh, in the Mizaj research the part of the uh, questionnaire as we are now uh, uploading the all of the Mizaj articles in the world in the Mesa's research uh, website, uh, uh, of course, the link of the um, for uh, about uh, for the uh, legal uh, limitation, we put the 
a link of the articles in the Mizaj Research uh, website and um, the abstract and the title um, are ready to present in the Mizaj Research uh, website and inshallah we will present as you mentioned uh, in the future. Uh, because we don't have in, uh, enough time and, uh, um, um, and, and I want to uh, finish the um, uh, decision on time uh, I think uh, the discussion is enough for this session and inshallah in the and next session in the next month, inshallah, we will discuss more about these uh, suggestions, inshallah. Thank you very much for all uh, my dear colleagues from all countries, uh, especially my, my dear professor uh, Rashid Bikha and other colleagues from Iran, India, other countries. And uh, special thanks for uh, Dr. Farooq uh, uh, for your good uh, presentation and your for your good ideas and for your good thesis about the message research inshallah we will use more uh, for your good opinions about this field inshallah thank you very much thank you all thank you thank you very much for your presentation doctor and all of the colleagues for the uh, presence thank you dr donishtar for managing this session very well thank you Thanks for your presence, Dr. Shams. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Akher. Be in touch. Thank you, sure. Matt. And in Persian, Khoda Hafez. Khoda Hafez. <laughs>